And thank you, everybody, for uh, taking the time to join me today. Again, my name is Wesley Boudreau, one of the financial advisors here at the Retirement Group. Today, we're going to talk about the Chevron retirement process and what it means to retire on purpose or with purpose. Now, before I get started, I just want to remind everybody that we are not employed by nor are we affiliated with Chevron. And then uh, throughout the process of this webinar, you'll see on your screen there's a couple of items. There's a Q&A box. So if you have any questions you'd like me to address or one of us follow up with you on, go ahead and take the time to jot that in there, and we'll be sure to try and address that at the end of the webinar. If we don't get to all of them, we'll follow up with you as well. And keep in mind your information is anonymous, so feel free to ask that. Your name will not be shown. Also, there's a chat box where periodically we will be putting some information in there that's, uh, that's good to follow along with. Uh, different items like uh, how to follow us on LinkedIn so you can stay up to date on any uh, any notices we give you or Chevron changes. Uh, how to set an appointment with myself or one of the other advisors in the office. Um, also, I think that we may put in a survey there. Uh, so if you have some time to fill that out, that may be worth your while. If you let us know how this went, uh, any suggested changes we should focus on or any new topics. And if you take a couple minutes to do that, I think we might be sending a box of cookies your way. So it may be well worth it. Before I get started, I just want to remind everybody who uh, hasn't been on a call in a while or hasn't worked with us who the retirement group is. Again, we are an independent financial advisory firm that focuses on working with corporate employees and helping them transition into retirement. We've been doing this for about uh, 30 years or so, and we've worked quite extensively with Chevron and Chevron employees. And the reason we only work with a few different companies is it allows us to actually have a deeper focus and understanding of what your actual benefits plans are. So we can help hold your hand through that retirement transition process, make sure you avoid a lot of common mistakes, and uh, obviously increase your retirement, uh, your retirement nest egg. And in turn, if you want to work with us, hopefully increase that throughout retirement as well. We've got offices throughout the country, so rest assured if you need to sit down face to face, we can still accommodate you that way. Uh, but obviously, uh, with the times we're in right now, if you want to have a, a web meeting or phone call or email, we can do all that as well. At the end of the day, if there's anything you take us up on, is uh, go ahead and take us up on our complimentary cash flow analysis. You'll hear me talk about that once or twice here later, but uh, there's no way to really determine if it's uh, if you're going to retire on purpose with purpose unless you know where you stand. And by going through that cash flow analysis, we can give you an idea of where you stand. And we'll be happy to tell you the truth, whether you can retire or whether you should work a couple more years. But uh, we can go through various scenarios to let you know the different options so you can determine the best day to retire and also uh, make sure you avoid some different mistakes that we see from time to time as well. Now, as far as going through the retirement, there's really kind of a checklist we put together. It's uh, pretty simple and it's something you can do on your own, but uh, we do believe by working with the company, uh, we can kind of hold your hand through that process and make it a little bit more smooth. First and foremost, you need to make sure that you're comfortable with the retirement process and understand your emotions. We do an entire seminar on the emotions of investing and the emotions of retirement. Um, but at the end of the day, I mentioned that cash flow analysis our job is to run through the financial numbers and let you know, financially speaking, whether you're ready to retire or not. Emotionally, you may not be ready to retire. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with where uh, you know they were great on paper, they could have retired five years ago, but they're still working because that's their livelihood. That's what they that's what they associate it with. They don't know what they're going to do if they walk out that door and, uh, and and get stuck at home. They don't have hobbies. They don't know what uh, what's coming next. Or the spouse may say they're not ready for you to come home at this point as well. So just make sure that uh, whenever it comes time for retirement, you are comfortable with that and you're ready to retire and you're not making any rash, to, quick decisions, especially when we see different changes in the industry and EOIs and things like that coming about. You want to make sure it's something that you're comfortable with before you pull that trigger. Now, at the end of the day, when it comes time for retirement and in retirement, generally speaking, we're going to focus on trying to help you decrease your risk and your volatility. Because um, again, what's going to happen in retirement, it's a little bit more uh, more nerve-wracking to see market volatility as opposed to having 10, 15, or 20 years of investment ahead of you. Now, generally speaking, again, most retirees are going to want to reduce their risk, and we'll be happy to review that with you. However, everybody's different. I've got a Chevron retiree that we uh, helped retire about five years ago who I'd say is extremely aggressive. Uh, his, uh, his true goal is really to pass on a big legacy for his, uh, his daughters. Um, however, we've sat down and gone through the, uh, gone through the plans multiple times and uh, found out that it's best to really kind of uh, split that strategy. We've got one strategy where it's set up to uh, build that legacy he's looking for and we're okay taking growth because it's not going to affect us on the retirement strategy where we've got another portion of the assets set up a little bit more conservative and we know we're looking at the uh, different income, um, uh, income options uh, associated with it to make sure that he and his wife are uh, taken care of for retirement so that growth strategy can uh, 
can, can go up or down uh, over the next 20, 30, hopefully 40 years if he lives that long. So again, everybody's different. Uh, by running that cash flow analysis and getting to know you, we can have a better idea of what you're looking at. And then uh, as far as the uh, the process, we want to increase your retirement income. I mentioned again that cash flow analysis and working with you prior to retirement, understand your, understanding your benefits will help us uh, uh, you know, get you started off with a higher nest egg so we can increase that uh, income right there. And then by working with us on the investment strategy, we can focus on, uh, on that as well. But again, uh, one of the other ways to help increase that income is helping make sure you keep that income and reduce the taxes. So we do a lot of tax planning strategies with our clients and prospects uh, and making sure that we um, reduce the amount of taxes they will be paying uh, on the retirement process uh, uh, initially and ongoing if they're a client. So we think you can do all this stuff on your own, but again, it gets a little complicated. You may not have the full expertise, so we do recommend working with a team like the retirement group. Um, but again, if you're doing it on your own, you can still use it as a sounding board. It's still important to run through this review to make sure you're doing everything correctly. Now, let's talk about some of the different uh, things we see coming up for the retirement transition process. We'll talk about some potential lump sum changes uh, based upon interest rates, which also can affect inflation going forward. We'll talk about how real estate actually impacts the retirement process, which is something we uh, most people don't talk a lot about. And then we'll talk about some different uh, mistakes and what it means to work with a team versus doing it on your own. Now first, let's get into the, uh, the, the source of income you'll see when you retire from Chevron. There's really three primary sources of income. Um, you're going to be looking at Social Security, which you have that option of taking as early as age 62, or deferring all the way up till age 70. Now we can go through a full detailed social security analysis to show you all the different claiming strategies associated with that if you like. Then you've also got your 401k where you and Chevron have been making contributions to it along the way and now you've built up a certain amount and you can start taking distributions from that. You can keep it in the 401k plan or roll it over to an IRA if you want. You've also got your pension. We're going to talk a little bit about the lump sum today but the pension option is a defined benefit plan in which case there is a formula to determine how much of an income annuity you're going to get on a monthly basis. You can decide to take that or you can actually decide to turn it over into a, a lump sum to try and outperform that if you want to. So that could be an income annuity uh, as far as the pension uh, source or you could uh, take that move it to a lump sum in an IRA and take distributions similar to how you would from the 401k. And then the fourth that, uh, that some people may have is real estate depending upon what you're looking to do with it. Uh, if you own real estate and you're not looking to simply just pass it on to your beneficiaries, there may be some other uh, other ways to generate uh, some retirement income off of that. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now first, let's talk about the uh, the lump sum. Now again, I mentioned that the benefits um, for the pension plan is a defined benefit plan, in which case there's a calculation looking at your years of service and your uh, final average pay uh, to determine actually how much you're going to get on a monthly basis. From there, you can actually uh, decide to take that pension as a monthly income to yourself, or you can look at a joint and survivor option if you want to make sure that you're uh, taking care of your spouse as well. Or you can say, hey, I want to take a lump sum. I want to try and manage this on my own. And that's where interest rates come into play and where we're going to see some changes um, going forward. So if we look at the interest rates here, what's going to happen is uh, when interest rates go up, your lump sum will go down. When interest rates go down, your lump sum will go up. So the way they look at this is uh, think about like a mortgage. When interest rates are low, you can afford a bigger house or a bigger mortgage. Um, what's going to happen is, let's say if Chevron is telling you they are going to pay you $3,000 a month for the rest of your life, what they do is they go and look at your uh, your age to figure out how, how close you are to, uh, to your life expectancy, to figure out how many years are left on that payment, and they look at interest rates uh, to figure out how much of a lump sum they're going to give you. If interest rates are low, they have to give you more money for you to go out and try and recreate that, uh, that same annuity payment. So that's what we've seen over the, uh, the last year or so with the pandemic is a, is a drop in interest rates. However, chances are we will see interest rates come up, and the question is by how much and how long will it take for those to come up. But we look at the seesaw effect right here. Again, as interest rates go down, your lump sum goes up and vice versa. Depending upon your age and everything, generally speaking, a 1% change in interest rates will correlate to about an 8 to a 12% change in your lump sum. So if you have a, let's say, a million dollar lump sum right now and interest rates go up by 1%, it could drop by 10%, so that could go down to $900,000. So depending upon what your income is, and if you're looking to hang on for just one year, if you made 100,000 a year, then you could have essentially be working for free that last year. So that's why it's really important to run that cash flow analysis we talked about in the review. Uh, we're working with a lot of individuals right now at Chevron that uh, we've, uh, over the last couple of years, we've kept an eye on these rates uh, because what they do is they move monthly. Let's take a look at them here. I'll zoom in just a little bit. 
Um, now, as far as the interest rates, the way that they're used to calculate the lump sum is there's three interest rates. There's the Pension Protection Act segment rates. And the first segment is going to correlate to the first five years of retirement. Second segment going to be the years six through 20. And the third, excuse me, the third segment is going to be for uh, years 21 and beyond. So the second segment has the heaviest weighting since it's going to capture 15 years of retirement. Well, if we look at this chart here, you can see how over the last five years or so, the interest rates have been on that uh, slow decline and then the pandemic exacerbated them and they actually dropped quite a lot. And we'll see where we are pretty low right there. Um, and we're actually starting to tick up just a little bit. So it's a question of how much inflation comes into play and how quickly will they go up. Now, one of the unique things about uh, Chevron versus other um, other different uh, um, uh, companies and their pension plans is Chevron actually updates their rates on a monthly basis. Others usually do it on a quarterly basis or some even once a year. Um, so you've got a little bit more flexibility in, uh, in when you want to convince your benefits on this and watching those interest rates. So again, the biggest issue is if you're within you know a year, especially especially a year, but if you're within maybe three years of retirement and you're leaning towards a lump sum, uh, give me a call. We need to look at monitoring those interest rates for you because again, it could mean you know whether or not you want to work a couple more months or even another year for a reduced salary versus uh, versus your full salary, depending upon how those interest rates change. Now, there's also factors as far as the uh, the age penalties and things like that, depending upon your age. But we get into those more in the webinar uh, that we go over the pension plan or one on one. Now, we talked about interest rates changing coming up and how they could uh, could affect the uh, uh, affect the lump sum. Some other things they could affect would be real estate and inflation. So real estate gen uh, generally or historically has not been a kind of considered a uh, investment uh, an investment portion for retirement. But if we look at how interest rates have come down and driven up the prices of a lot of the real estate, a uh, couple with the pandemic driving up real estate in the suburban areas, um, this could be an opportunity to review that as a potential uh, asset within your retirement process if you need that or you want that. Um, now, one of the things that are a little bit different here is uh, we are a little, little bit less concerned than what we were with 2007 and the crisis of 2008 because there was more of a, uh, a supply issue there. Now it's a demand issue where we still have a lot of demand for uh, for housing. Um, so we don't see a, a, a big drop coming up. Uh, we depend upon interest rates. If they rise, we may see a leveling or so. But there's different ways that we can look at this. If you are um, if you own your house or own a condo or something like that and you have equity in there, uh, then that may be something that if you need it for retirement, you could tap into. And we work with a, work with a lot of clients that do it in different ways. Um, one of the best ways or, is, uh, or the simple way is if you're downsizing. A lot of people are downsizing. They may have the house that the kids grew up in and it may be too big. So maybe it's worth $500,000. You sell it and go buy something that's worth $300,000. Now you've got two hundred grand in equity that can boost your retirement income savings if you want to. Uh, maybe the numbers are bigger. Maybe the numbers are smaller. It just depends. Another option is uh, simply moving to a, a different area. I'm um, working with two people right now that uh, live up north, and one's looking to come down towards uh, Texas and uh, and uh, get a house in San Antonio. Uh, so she's going to actually uh, be moving to an area where it's cheaper living, so the house will cost less, and she'll avoid the state income taxes as well, so another way to save. We ran the scenario in the uh, cash flow analysis to show those different options. So we saw side by side where she was going to be, you know, I think making a, a, you know, about $150,000 difference on the on the house and then saving another another six to eight thousand dollars a year on taxes so it uh, it stretched out the retirement quite a bit another one is actually moving to Florida and getting a similar size house but a little bit cheaper um, and again same situation uh, um, avoiding the state income taxes there so that's one option if you're looking to uh, simply downsize um, or if you're looking to move states as well uh, another option that some people look at and we don't get into in too much detail is a reverse mortgage if you're looking to stay into it uh, so if you have questions on that let us know but uh, Again, that's more kind of a last resort uh, situation. And then again, the uh, we see real estate not moving too much because the replacement costs are so high right now as far as what it is to build a house. So that's why we do see that market staying somewhat stable, uh, barring, again, any major interest rate changes. And so talking about the interest rates, that's a big culprit going forward. We're looking at the low interest rates right now and the effect of inflation going forward. Um, we do know the interest rates are so low, eventually they're going to have to come up. The question is... Uh, how quickly and by how much do they come up. Once that starts happening, we'll start to see inflation. I know everybody has seen uh, the price of different items go up during this pandemic, and we've seen the, the CPI jump quite a bit in, uh, uh, over the summer as well. Um, but eventually, uh, long-term inflation may uh, come into play. So you need to be very aware of that when it comes to uh, time to invest, and you're based upon your allocations. 
the typical uh, you know diversification between bonds and stocks may not work quite as well going forward as it has over the last 30 years because we're coming off a bull market for uh, for bonds because again those interest rates in the 80s were so high as they move down bond prices move up so the opposite is going to happen here as interest rates move up eventually over over time bond prices will come down so you're not going to have quite as much yield or quite as much performance on that so that's why it's really important to run that cash flow analysis and find out what you're trying to achieve and we can determine a, a sound portfolio strategy to help you meet those income needs with as little risk as possible. And at the end of the day, you know, we do again recommend working with the team to make sure that you uh, you avoid a lot of these different mistakes. Um, it's something you can do on your own, but again, it's really important to have at least a sounding board, so at least run it through us uh, initially. And if you want to work with us, that's great. If you want to do it on your own, then we give you some information at least. If you're working with somebody else right now, that's okay. Uh, we do recommend getting a second opinion. We even recommend our own clients do that periodically. Uh, but if you are working with somebody, make sure they have a deep understanding of the Chevron plans so they don't make any mistakes. I can't tell you how many times I've uh, sat down with individuals, even with their advisor, that uh, had made mistakes and cost their, uh, cost their client tens of thousands of dollars in the retirement process. So it's very important to understand that. Also, make sure you understand their fee structure when you're working with somebody. Um, at, at the retirement group, we are fiduciaries. We're transparent on our fee structure. Uh, it's not a one-size-fits-all firm, so our goal, again, is to run through that cash flow analysis and then back into uh, different investment strategies and find out one that best suits your needs. And then uh, you also want to make sure, again, you're working with an investment management team. Myself, the other advisors here, we can't do everything all the time, so we do rely on our back office. We also rely on the support from Schwab, who we clear through, to help with a lot of the investment management uh, expertise and then also help us with the support. And at the end of the day, uh, again, you want to make sure you run that cash flow analysis. Uh, it's detrimental to know where you stand before you make any investment decisions. You want to make sure you update that periodically as well. So if it's been a year or longer since you've run one with us, give us a call and we can go through and update that with you as well. Now, at the end of the day, that cash flow analysis right now, I think it's only about 30% uh, of Americans uh, have one. So if you spend about maybe uh, about maybe 10 to 15 minutes with us on the phone, uh, we can gather some information and get that put together for you. We'll get it back out to you in about a week or two, and we'll be able to uh, go over that with you and then tweak it from there if you need any uh, specific updates on it as well. And then with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for taking a little bit of time to join us and go through this retirement process. Uh, but the best way to uh, resolve the, any questions you have is to give us a call so we can go through that one-on-one because -on -one everybody's unique and different. So just give us a call at 1-800-900-5867. We're more than happy to help you out. You can also hold your phone up to the uh, QR code on the screen if you want to. There's an option to schedule a meeting with myself or one of the other advisors if you want to jump into our calendars. There's also an option to uh, follow us on the LinkedIn page if you want to make sure you stay up to date on the different webinars coming up and uh, any changes we have coming up with, uh, with uh, Chevron as well. Now we've got uh, just one question coming through here right now. Um, and I'm going to wrap it up here real quickly. If you have any other questions, go ahead and give us a call, or uh, if you put them in, we'll circle back to you because we're running a little bit late on this. But the one question was uh, was um, was can I was can I retire and change my pension uh, pension annuity to my lump sum? So let me let me go back and clarify this. It, it depends upon uh, the the source of that question. If you've already uh, commenced your benefits and you're actually taking that pension as an annuity then no, you can't go back and change that to a lump sum, unfortunately. If you have retired and have not uh, not selected your uh, pension yet, then you still have the option to choose either the annuity or the lump sum. And it's really important to give us a call to kind of go through this so we can run that cash flow analysis and show you both of those side by side. Um, and that's one of the things we did with a lot of individuals uh, over the last year. They retired, but we told them not to, uh, not to pull the trigger on the pension just yet because interest rates were dropping. As those interest rates dropped, we were seeing their lump sums go up because they were looking to take the lump sum. If you're taking the uh, pension as an annuity, it, the interest rates don't have an effect on you whatsoever. The other issue is uh, your age, whenever you decide to uh, pull the trigger on commencing benefits. Um, if you're under 60, there may be an age penalty there, so you're not getting 100% of the actual pension. So again, let's say if you're retiring at age 55 and you're looking to take the annuity, um, then we'll have a discussion as to whether it makes sense to take it now at the reduced benefit or defer that, get the full benefit. Or if you look at the lump sum, does it make sense to age out of some of those penalties and uh, compare that with interest rate changes and how that's going to affect you as well. So again, I want to thank everybody for taking some time to uh, join us today. If uh, we didn't cover any questions and you want to reach out to us, you can call us again at 1-800-900-5867. 
want to thank you. you have a great day and hope everybody stays safe.